forgiveness. Forgive one another. It's really powerful, isn't it? Uh, As you would expect, I have a video for you. Life was busy. It was three kids under the age of six. Lou was busy working. Ended up going to work for a multi-billion dollar company, making good money, built big house. I was super proud of him and the career he had, yet he was very distant. I always looked at it as I was the breadwinner, and I always looked at her to do the cooking, the cleaning, taking care of the kids. So we started fighting a lot. I fell into a depression because I just couldn't figure out what was wrong in my life. So at about nine years of marriage, I found Lou's phone, and I looked at the phone and opened it to a picture of a woman and quickly realized there was an affair happening. There was a lot of anger in me. I couldn't believe he could hurt me like that. I kicked Lou out. I said, you're done, you're gone. I threw some of his things out of the house. Um, He left, very willingly, actually. So I thought, okay, I can live the life that I have been living free. I remember trying to look for like, what's next for my life? Really seeking God for strength. He said, I just need you to love Lou like I love him. I didn't know how I was gonna do this, but I tried. So I texted Lou and said, "Uh, I want you to come home. I'm sure he thought I was crazy because the last time he saw me, I was super crazy uh, when I kicked him out. How on earth could someone invite someone back into their lives that just destroyed it? He came home, but that didn't fix really anything. It brought us close together in proximity, and that was it. Our backyard neighbor came up to us and handed us an invitation to try out River Valley Church. But I just felt something stirring, and when they did the altar call, I raised my hand. I accepted Christ, and I just I said, if this is real, I'm in. And I remember that being huge for him, and maybe even more so for me, because I knew it was a step. But I carried unforgiveness for a long time. I remember clearly the day we were at church. It must have been about forgiveness or something that the Holy Spirit said it's time. The day that I said I forgive you to Lou was the day that I was freed. That forgiveness has allowed me to let it go. It released me from the hurts. One of the things through counseling was a lot of anger that I was holding on to. What I was doing was I was blaming everyone else for my problems, for my behavior, for my attitudes. I wasn't taking responsibility for it. You know, and it just came to a point to where God, I really felt, spoke to me and said, I don't want three quarters of you. I want 100% of you. Felt real for the first time, but I loved it. My family life was growing stronger. We were growing closer. The kids saw a different dad. I was more involved. Uh, more committed. You know, the affair happened over 11 years ago, and it took years to get to the place we are now. God's taken us down a wonderful journey. We started putting God, Christ, at the center of everything we did. To be fully submitted, to be fully committed to God, includes all aspects of your life. Goodness to say I'd do it again seems so silly. But Lou and I have a marriage that everybody wants. (laughs) I want it, I brag about it. We're each other's best friends. And we give all the glory to God. Uh, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and move in our lives. Holy Spirit, as we touch on on a a really difficult subject, God, would you uh, open our spiritual ears, open our spiritual eyes to see, to hear, open our hearts to receive your word. God, I pray that you would bring healing in this place tonight. Father, where there's 
uh, bitterness, where there's anger, where there's unforgiveness, God, would you melt our hearts? In Jesus' name, amen. One of the, the, the famous verses in all of the Bible on forgiveness is this one, Ephesians 4.32. Uh, I love this because it's children's writing. Uh, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Hold on to that as we, as we go through tonight. Jesus took a jug of water and a bowl and he wrapped a towel around his waist and he knelt and he washed the feet. Oh, I get goose pimples down my bum. He washed the feet of his disciples. Do you know, this was the last thing that he did on the night that he was betrayed before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was taken and tried, and before he died. I don't know what you would want to spend your last evening doing, but I suspect it's not washing the feet, even of your friends. And yet, there was a purpose behind everything that Jesus ever did because Jesus was making a point. Have you ever got dirty? I mean, really filthy dirty. Uh, I was thinking, uh, as you would expect, there are countless times when I have been in this predicament, but I thought I would pick on somebody else. Could have been rosy, but it wasn't. Um, but it was another youth camp. Um, I remember, this is actually my daughter, Rebecca, uh, when we went on a youth camp to a place called Carity Wood in Kent. Um, and she and her friends there decided that they would do some mud surfing. And you know that advert that says whiter than white? It doesn't work. We scrubbed and scrubbed and put those clothes through 90 degree washes probably and nothing would touch the stains that were in those clothes. So we ended up throwing those clothes away. Unforgiveness stains. Maybe not visibly. But the effects of unforgiveness are just as dramatic. Funnily enough, not on the one who needs forgiving, but on the one who chooses, for whatever reason, not to forgive. Because uh, unforgiveness leads to resentment, resentment leads to bitterness, bitterness to retaliation, and that's never a good thing, is it? Wars have started for less. I've got a war story. It's about an American soldier in the Korean War who received a letter from his fiancée. Oh. But it was a letter breaking up with him because she'd met another man and was now going to marry this other fella instead of him. On top of that, she requested that he send her the picture that she'd given him of herself so that she could use that to announce the wedding to her new man. He was hurt. He was very hurt. In fact, he was so hurt that he got his soldier friends, his buddies, 
for pictures of all their girlfriends, which he put all together in a shoebox and mailed it to his girlfriend, saying, have a look through these. I can't actually remember which one of you is your photograph. Ouch. I'm hoping that's not true. But knowing what unforgiveness, leading to bitterness, leading to resentment, leading to retaliation does, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. That's where war comes from. Jesus took a jug and he washed his disciples' feet. His example for each one of us of what we should do when things go wrong. Note the night. It was the very same night as the night that he was betrayed. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. What has Christ done for each one of us? Just think how much we need forgiving. Forgive one another. It's hard, this, isn't it? This has got to be, as Martin said, one of the hardest one another sayings in the Bible. Thanks, Martin, but I forgive you. Told you I'd get that in. You really hurt me when you said. You really hurt me when you did. When you left. When you. When you. When you. We've all been hurt, haven't we? We know what it's like because hurt is real. You can't under, underestimate that, nor should you, actually. And just forgetting about whatever happened doesn't help anybody. But resentment, that's holding on to that grudge, damages one person, you. The other person might not even know that they've done anything to hurt you. So what are we supposed to do with the hurt? What are we supposed to do with the bitterness, with the anger, with the resentment? Colossians 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself. We need, we need to learn to dress properly. Dress yourself, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I, I was always told that if a passage starts with the word therefore, you've got to find out what it's there for. So we had the bit before this last week. It's a passage that, that talks all about your past life, put, it, put your past life behind you. This is what you should model now, we're going on. Therefore, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness and all that. It's not easy, is it? But then whoever said it was going to be easy. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Ouch again. That's really tough. Forgive 
as the Lord forgave you. As I think about the things that I've done in my past life, the need I have for forgiveness, how could I not forgive anyone that hurts me? I'll even forgive the cat walking through. He took the jug and he washed his disciples' feet. It's a picture. It's an example to each one of us on how we should respond. That's it, get the pastor to sort it. Back in the room. Have you ever stopped to think who was in the room? Well, of course, there was Peter and there was Andrew and there was John. The good ones. Judas was there. Just before he went and betrayed Jesus. Do you think Jesus knew? Well... Would Jesus really have washed Judas's feet if, if he knew? Well, of course Jesus knew. He knew exactly what Judas was going to do. And he took the jug. And he took the bowl. And he washed Judas's feet along with all the others. And he knows about you and he knows about me. We'd have been there, you know. We'd have been in that room. We would have been bickering and biting. As well as believing. It's not my three Bs then. <laughs> a few years ago, uh, I took our youth away on a camping weekend. And we broke some tiles on purpose. I spoke about how when we sin, it's like we get broken ourselves. It's the same when people sin against us. They, the hurt that they cause breaks us on the inside. During the weekend, we took those broken pieces and we put them back together again and made something beautiful. It's up there. It's possible to take something that's broken and make something beautiful again. It's another picture of what God does with the broken pieces of our lives when we give them to him. And that's the key. When we give them to him. He takes what is broken and he makes something beautiful if we let him. There's a song that was written a few years ago now that's got these words here. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. When we trade our unforgiveness, God gives us the ability to let it go and forgive. But we have to choose. Ouch. 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 Why should I forgive when I've... I hear that all the time. It's our choice. God will make something beautiful when we give it to him. Why wouldn't we want to forgive people when we think about what Jesus has done for each one of us. You stop and think about the sin that was in your life, the sin that is in our lives. To forgive. It's our choice. And that's the first step to finding the joy that only God can bring. It's not easy. 
Again, whoever said it was going to be easy. I found this great quote here. Happiness begins to happen as forgiveness begins to flow. It's Max Licardo, a very wise person, far more wise than I am. You see, the only person that unforgiveness hurts is you. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Can we do that? Can we forgive? Because when we do forgive, that opens the door to all sorts of good things. And who doesn't want good things? When we forgive, it opens the door for God to move more in our lives. I want God to move more in my life. So let's pray. Father, this is a hard message. Father, it hurts. It hurts when people let us down. It hurts when people say bad things. It hurts when people leave us. It hurts. And yet, God, you ask us to forgive as you have forgiven us. So, Father, tonight I pray, God, that you would move in all our lives. God, where we have been hurt, will you heal us? Father, not just with words, heal us so that we can move on. In Jesus' name. Amen.